Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Cult of Chucky, released direct-to-video in 2017. Cult takes place four years after Curse and continues the Nika Pierce storyline. The Nika era is maybe my favorite era of the Chucky franchise, partly because it's a culmination of everything that came before it. Curse introduced those legacy elements at the tail end of its runtime, but in Cult, they're much more integrated, meaning more Tiffany Valentine and more adult Andy Barkley. Don Mancini returns to the director chair for the third time in his series, and he continues his fun stylistic choices he first showed off in Curse. I love how much he emulates 70s horror and giallo filmmakers. They're interested in exploring the weird incongruous beauty of horror, which I love. Tone-wise, Mancini takes what he did in Curse and injects some humor back into it, though not the campy kind that was predominant in Seed. I think Cult strikes the perfect balance. At times it's hilarious, and other times it's an effective psychological thriller. It's not nearly as tight as curse, but I think the chaos is part of the charm. It also helps knowing it was another fun Mancini set. The returning Fiona Dourif especially seemed to have a blast, getting to work with her dad again, as well as her new best friend. Chucky movies are really, really fun to make. Also, Don from making Curse of Chucky has become, I think, my best friend. <laughs> Seems like if Don Mancini likes you, you've got some job security. And you can have internet security too, thanks to today's sponsor, NordVPN. We're on our seventh Chucky movie now, and if there's one thing we've learned, it's that you just can't keep a good guy down. And there's a reason for that, the power of good old body hopping. Now, we may not be able to transfer our souls into inanimate objects, yet, but we can transfer our browsing locations to Nord servers in over 50 countries. That'll give you the ability to access streaming sites and their available collections from places like Italy, I'm streaming Curse of Chucky, France, I'm streaming Cult of Chucky, Australia, I'm streaming Edge of Tomorrow. What? I also watch non-horror movies. And so many more! That's equivalent to traveling for me, since I basically live on my computer. With Nord, you can have the confidence to browse securely, knowing that they absolutely won't share your data. Unlike some people. Grace Pool. This is his uncle, Charles. I can't believe she's not guarded against dollware attacks. And Nord even has a built-in kill switch to make sure your info is never exposed. Which, okay, I guess a kill switch is also kind of like Grace Pool. Right now, you can get all that sweet, sweet server hopping for yourself using our link, nordvpn.com slash deadmeat, or just click the link in the description. Either way, you get a two-year plan at a huge discount, plus four additional months for free. That's nordvpn.com slash deadmeat for more free months than this movie has Chucky's. What a deal! Cult is the latest of the Mancini Chucky films. Did they save the most for last? Let's find out and commit ourselves to these kills. The movie begins with Andy Barkley getting cock-blocked by his past. You googled me. Yeah, I did. Fucking internet. Man, Chucky ruined his life and his game. You'd think there'd be a dating app for final people by now. Andy tries to recover with the quickest way to anyone's heart, talking about Chucky's kill count. He mentions Aunt Maggie, along, along with my with... teacher and my caseworker and 37 other people over the years. I'm aware of. Well, wouldn't you know it, Andy? This is nominally my job. You've got 40 kills committed by Chucky's tiny hands, but by our count, he's at 43. Wonder which ones you're missing. His date's a doll machete, so Andy returns to his murder cabin alone. Actually, when I put it that way, you know what? Good call on her part. Unless she too wanted to admire Andy's arsenal. He does have a friend here, kept behind the last place anyone would look. A Child's Play 3 reference. Barkley's been busy with the doll that was sent to him four years ago in the post credit scene of Curse of Chucky. Play with this. Or more specifically, he's been busy with the doll's head. That is not what everybody wants. Got him looking like ground chuck. But this chuck don't want to stay on the ground. He wants to get high. Give me a hit off that, will ya? <laughs> Forget friends, they dream rotation till the end. <laughs> Aw, Chucky, why you gotta ruin it, man? Andy responds by picking his favorite tool from his torture drawer and blowtorching Chucky's head. And you know nothing goes better with barbecue than title card! With a little recap credit sequence on the side. We're reminded of how Nika got screwed over by the asshole Ginger doll, and we see that she's still processing her Cabbage Patch TSD. Her doctor, Foley, has her convinced that Chucky is a result of schizophrenia. He was a fantasy. A delusion. Nika's finally accepted that falsehood as fact after the past four years, so Foley transfers her to a lower security Hawkins lab. The place is actually called Hargate, but real talk, that's a bad name. It's hard to remember. Hargate to remember? <laughs> you know what? Never mind. Nurse Carlos sets Nika up in a one bed, one bath, no color suite, but the service leaves something to be desired. Thanks for being so nice. Don't misunderstand, I'm not a fan. 
we're not gonna be friends. Well, not with that attitude. He's all talk though, cause he's already sneaking her juicy fruit by the end of the scene. That's a peacemaker guard if I've ever seen one. Nika meets a guy named Multiple Malcolm and pretty soon he's sneaking her juicy fruit too. Ew. Believe it or not, this is the first non-toy sex scene in the series. Russ and Diane didn't quite make it that far. But it's not all cute guys and binging that new show Babbling Brooks. Nika has to go to Foley's group therapy, straight talk only in here. A combative woman, Claire, demands to know why Nika killed her family and blamed it on a doll. Why'd you burn your house down? You always bring that up. We already met multiple Malcolm, who takes on multiple identities, currently Michael Phelps. Probably learned about multiple personalities from Foley, am I right? Bang bang! Oh, and that ghostly woman in the back is Angela, who thinks she's a ghost. Can you see me? She's not though. Angela, we can all see you. When Nika says she hopes her niece Alice is doing okay, Angela perks up to tell her that she isn't. Chucky told her. He called me on the phone. He said to tell you he's coming for you. And also, he thinks I'm a lot cooler than you. Nika laughs it off. I mean, it's a prank call from a 30-year-old doll. But Dr. Foley puts her sense of humor to the test with a radical form of treatment. Call it the Simpson foster parenting method. Exposure therapy, AKA a big old doll of trauma. You get that from Trick or Treat Studios, dude? Hot topic. Oh shit, it's 1998 again? Another patient, Madeline, says that Chucky is baby now. He's my baby. He's a replacement for her own child whom she lost. Hope she's down to raise a rude fucking doll. Nika's doing all right, considering the presence of a good guy and that vague meat soup they're eating. But a visitor spoils the mood. It's Jennifer Tilly. Did anyone ever tell you you look exactly like Jennifer Tilly? Yeah, she gets that all the time. Because she is Jennifer Tilly. I mean, it's Tiffany Valentine in Jennifer Tilly's body. Right now, she's saying her name is Valentine. Don Mancini originally wrote this scene with Tiffany going by Jennifer Tilly, but the studio thought it'd be too confusing. I guess they didn't want Seed to be required viewing. Probably why a scripted mention of Glenn slash Glenda was ultimately cut. Mancini was excited to have Fiona and Jennifer in a scene together, since they represent opposite ends of the franchise's tone. Tiffany's movies were comedy oriented, while Nika's first film was much more horror. The femme fatale looking Valentine says she's the legal guardian of Alice, whom we last saw getting Ade Duade by Chucky at the end of Curse, right before that jump scare. Valentine's here with news. Alice is dead. Apparently, she went out Padme style. He was a broken heart. Now, Tiffany isn't lying. Alice really is dead. Mancini said he wanted to kill her at the end of Curse, but the studio wouldn't let him. He knew he had to address the loose end sooner or later, thus her reported death here. I'm not gonna add Alice to the kill count, though, since she died in between movies, and I generally don't count those deaths. Closest case I can think of is Alex in Final Destination 2, but I counted him because we saw a picture of his body. Ain't no visual evidence in this movie. Tip's got even worse news too. Well, no, I guess not worse than a kid's death. But she's brought a Chucky doll for Nika. She says Alice wanted her to have it. Oh hey, by the way, great doctoring during all of this Foley. He puts Chucky 2 in time out, and since this is the seventh Chucky movie, Mancini cuts the will he won't he shit right away. Hell yeah, bust out that knee-high POV. <gasps> Neo V! In a few shots demonstrating how far puppet technology has come, Chucky 2 opens a drawer with his baby plastic hands and grabs a scalpel all by his widow shelf. Then he struts down the hall straight out of the gates of heaven, like Lucifer himself. I really love the look of the hospital, which may be the least occupied mental institution of all time. It's so, uh, what's the word? Pretty fucking colorless. Yeah! Craig Sandell's returned from Curse to do production design again, creating this clinical modernist set on a soundstage in Winnipeg. It's a completely new look for the franchise, standing in stark contrast to the gothic mansion in Curse. The desaturated sterile setting helps make Chucky's colorful outfit and hair stand out. As for the exterior, I believe it was filmed at Winnipeg's public safety building, which was demolished in 2020. Looks like VFX artist Jens Kaffitz did some digital extensions to the building. Angela runs into Chucky so he can deliver his first epic one-liner of the film. Where's Nika? Never mind. I will always I always think it's hilarious that that's Chucky's first line in this movie. Where's Nika? Where's Nika? Angela's insistence that she's a g g g g g g ghost gets Chucky too p p p p p p pissed. Dude. Okay, lady, you know what? You're next. You just made the list! Fucking cuckoo's nest. And he leaves with a reference to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Brad Dourif's breakthrough film. It's hard to make an asylum movie without paying homage to One Flew. The juicy fruit gum earlier was also a direct nod. Oh. Juicy fruit. Ah, juicy fruit. 
Chucky 2 is Chucky too late by the time he finds Nika's room. She's already slit her wrists with a broken spoke of her wheelchair. But Chucky ain't about to forfeit a kill from his point chart, so he saves her life and leaves an IOU. Not that he's gonna spend a night kill free. After saving Nika, Chucky made good on his promise, borrowing her shiv to murk Angela in her room. Sleep well, little angel. You're a real ghost now. A confession is left in Angela's blood, but which Chucky did it? Madeline's baby Chucky or the recently arrived Chucky 2? What an ugly doll. Nika catches everyone up to speed on the serial killer inside of Chucky, Charles Lee Ray. He was a serial killer in the 80s. He murdered 22 people before they shot him in a toy store. Also, I look exactly like him for some reason. Dr. Foley asks Nika how he can prove the doll's just a toy. Nika makes him ruin its resale value. Well, Chucky 2's not the thing, and it doesn't seem to be alive either. But what about Babby? Oh, Babby gone. Maddie takes Babby for a walk, so Nika asks for help from Malcolm, who no longer thinks he's Michael Phelps. I'm Mark, by the way. He's Mark Zuckerberg. Well, kind of. Actor Adam Hurtig based his Zuck on Jesse Eisenberg's performance in The Social Network to hint that Malcolm's disorder order isn't quite as authentic as he lets on. In Curse, Herdig played a completely unrelated character, Officer Stanton. Mancini starts doing that around now, reusing the same actors as completely different characters. The Asylum's nurse, Ashley, is played by Allie Tatarin, who was the delivery woman in the Andy cameo at the end of Curse. Tatarin's actually a Kill Count vet. She died in the beginning of the Silent Night reboot and became a popsicle in Wrong Turn 4. Interestingly, that fellow snowy horror film was also shot by cinematographer Michael Marshall, who returned for cult after shooting Curse. Madeline takes her plastic kid to one of the mental hospital's amenities, an attached cemetery. A ping pong table would have been nice, but whatever. Chucky eyes Nika spying on him and sends his regards with a flip of the finger. Nika is highly offended, then shocked as Chuck's chucked into an open grave. When Zuckerberg catches Upperberg, Maddie tells him there's a bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's down there. Or Sweet Baby Ray's. Here, she'll help him get it. With the human sacrifice complete, Chucky rises from the grave to Oh, I mean gets handed from the grave normally by Malcolm. But Malcolm really does rise from the grave not normally. Calm down, Michael Keaton. And, uh, Nika? Yeah, watch out. Claire decides to send Chucky 2 to toy hell, but he's got an old trick up his rainbow sleeve. Nothing like a classic. She's got a bite mark like Kenny Omega, so now she's a true believer in the killer doll tale. Dr. Foley's only cure for that is, you guessed it, even more Chucky. Now you sit right there and be Claire's little night terror. She's conscious, but she just won't be able to move. The sequence is mean, but I kind of love it. All the stranded Claire can do is listen to those little toy feet tap, stare at the screensaver on the ceiling, and wait to die in a cool way. Compressed. Does that mean what I think it means? I like when Chucky is funny, as long as he reminds us he's a nasty son of a bitch. And boy does he here, launching the canister into and through the glass ceiling. It rains down in beautiful slow motion before giving Claire a serious pain in the neck. The scene feels as much inspired by the waterbed kill in Bride as it does the opening kill in Suspiria. It's the movie's first on-screen murder, and it's so gruesome, Chucky has to pat himself on his plush back. Sometimes I scare myself. Chucky got another redesign for this movie, courtesy of returning puppeteer Tony Gardner, who also gets a producer credit this time around. Stick with Mancini, and he'll take care of you. I think of it as a family first and horror second. You know, I think it's that tight of a group. Gardner didn't love the stretched face design he made for Chucky and Curse, so he went back and looked at the original films and tried to model the new doll after them. Then he made the eyes more human, having the lids track with them and adding bags underneath. Effects-wise, lots of the same technology we've seen before, but this time they leaned into the technique they began with Curse, where the puppeteers operate Chucky up close, wearing green clothes that can be digitally removed later on. It helped them shoot faster and have a lot more scenes with Chucky walking around. You know, I never really thought about it before, but it's a testament to the talent of the Chucky puppeteers that Mancini says he can direct the doll as though it were just another actor, even though he's actually talking to five or more people controlling it. We catch back up with Andy doing his favorite thing, eating sugary cereal. He sees on Perez Hilton's blog that Nika's Asylum has recently had some deaths and a Chucky. That means there's more than one bad good guy running around, so Andy busts out his secret weapon, a Chucky without bangs. He heads to the Asylum with his mobile arsenal. Tiffany calls him just to fuck around. Who is this? Tiffany? Jennifer? 
Even I lose track. She tells him the cult of Chucky is growing, then laughs at his face across the split screen. This scene was a last minute addition. Mancini added it when he heard fans wanted to see these characters together. Nika tries to warn Dr. Foley about the tandem toy murderers, but he just wants to talk about his favorite system of a down album. I want to hypnotize you. I'm sure it will mesmerize her. Nika reluctantly goes under a truth serum and wakes up staring at a turn signal. Foley takes advantage of her state to suggest he has evidence of her killing Angela and Claire. Even worse is when he starts getting rapey. I've missed these little sessions of ours. Haven't you? No. This fucking guy. Even Chucky feels the need to step in. You know you're fucked up when you disgust that guy. <laughs> And they call me sick? Instead of the usual murder, Chucky opts for peer pressure. He tries to convince Nika to kill her knocked out abuser. She declines and takes the trippy way out and has a vision of the now dead Alice, played by the returning Summer Howell. Then Chucky shows up and gets all big and wiggly. <laughs> oh shit, and he's got the limited edition Charles Lee Ray knife blade. Just when Nika thinks she's safe and sound in the snow globe room, she gets attacked by the scariest thing of all, remembering Child's Play 3. Nika comes down off this high to find that Chucky hasn't killed her, or Dr. Foley. What is that doll up to? Is he recruiting or something? And what the hell is your name today? It's Charles. Well, that's not good. Maddie takes baby Chucky away for his noon feeding. I don't know if doll warranties exist, but if they do, this one's voided. Nika heads down the hall and sends her architecture-defying drone to see what's going on. Looks like Chucky's getting lucky. Ooh, and he uses too much teeth when he's sucky. Maddie puts Chucky to bed, then prepares to put him to sleep. I never stop loving you. Wow, what a dark reveal. Madeline was committed after she suffocated her real-life baby to death. Dr. Foley shows up and tells Madeline to repent for her sins by becoming Canadian. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. She's healing already. But Nika still smells blood, and it ain't the nipple kind. He's alive! I like to be hugged. Foley proposes killing two psychoses with one stone by burying the baby in a grave. They already tried that like three movies ago, dude. Keep up. They try it anyway in the hospital's grave backyard. There lies Chucky, a good guy. Nika watches from afar and spits on his little grave with spiteful doubt. He'll be back. He always comes back. She ain't wrong. He said so himself. I'll be back. I always come back! Andy finally gets to the front gate of Hargate and checks in the hard way, getting himself committed by punching the guard in the face. At least he gets the Magneto suite. Nika's too busy watching for graboids to notice a new patient. Ooh, there's one! But a surprise booster shot takes her out before she can send up the Burt signal, meaning she misses this plushy Evil Dead-esque shot. Dr. Foley gets a surprise delivery of, what else? Another murder doll. Huh, was this one sent by Sergeant Botnick? Oh wait, never mind, he did. You know who's not dead though? Babby Chuck! Chucky, and he's excited to give mommy a hug. Already on Suicide Watch, Madeline asks Chucky if he can do the deed for her. Will it hurt? I'll do my best. Again, this movie's dark as hell. We're watching a suicide by doll. Chucky rips out her vocal cords or a piece of pastrami she had stuck in there. Or I don't know what that was. Then he sacrifices his arm to make it look like Madeline did it herself. With another death, Nurse Ashley gives her two seconds notice and quits. It's the smartest thing a supporting character has ever done in a Chucky movie. A pissed off Foley finds Nika tied up in his office, lock and key. He doesn't even bother hypnotizing her anymore. He's gonna send her back to high security and say that she He's insane. But first, he's gonna get creepy and make her put on the red shoes and dance the blues. Before Dr. Folester can have his way with Nika, she spits in his face and Chucky too breaks a bottle over his head. I just can't with this guy. I don't know whether to kill him or just take notes. Chucky tries to once again bully Nika into killing, but they're interrupted by dirty one-armed Babby. He lets Chucky 2 know that Andy is here, and hijinks appropriately ensue. I'm just saying it behooves us to watch our step. Behooves. Listen to you. You sound like Hannibal Lecter. I can't believe they canceled that show. That reference was written in because Don Mancini was a writer and producer on NBC's Hannibal. Mancini's basically devoted his life to the Chucky franchise. Outside of it, the only things he's worked on are Hannibal and Channel Zero, which I think is where he met some of this movie's cast. He credits his time on those shows with inspiring the Chucky TV series. Chucky's 1 and 2 find Chucky 3, Buzzcut Chucky, which Andy sent through the mail to Dr. Foley. They wake him up using a new incantation variation. Ah, Dave, oh, cool. Kimbella. 
Give me the power I beg of you. Oh shit, Boku? Babe, wake up! New Dumbala just dropped! A few years ago, I came across this groovy new spell on VoodooForDummies.com that changed everything. Glad to see Chuck and Tiffany are loyal to the Dummies brand. With the Boku spell, Charles Lee Ray can now possess Buku bodies. Anything that can stab, really. Including Nika's niece, Alice. People trust cute little girls almost as much as cute little dolls. But little girls can get hurt. Chucky says Alice was killed when a would-be victim fought back. Jesus, they really gave her the new treatment, huh? Couldn't have even given her a proper death? Like, you know. Beating them to death with a yardstick. Or setting them on fire. Eviscerating them. All actual examples. The triple Chucky shenanigans is my favorite part of this movie. It's an idea Don Mancini had back when he wrote Child's Play 3, when the vat of plastic was corrupted by Chucky's blood. My original intention, which we ultimately couldn't afford, was multiple Chucky. I always wondered that. Yeah. I never understood why like, they made multiple dolls out yeah. of the plastic. Yeah, multiple Chucky's. <gasps> the studio said it was too expensive back then, but you know Don, he held on to the idea for recycling. He was still talking about it when Curse came out in 2013. Maybe Curse of Chucky 2 or whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever the next one is, maybe we'll get to that. It may have taken him 26 years, but he was finally able to pull it off. To keep the triplets straight on set, Mancini and Gardner assigned them nicknames. Buzzcut, Ragamuffin, and Edwardian. I'll give you Buzzcut, but I'm keeping Chucky 2 and Babby, thank you very much. Carlos enters and witnesses the triad of Bastardum, and they descend on him like a pack of copies. The team building exercise sees Carlos sliced, stabbed, and drilled. These damn Chuckies are like a homicidal Voltron. This kill, which was Tony Gardner's favorite in the film, was the most difficult part of production, taking five or six days to shoot. Drill. Part of that had to do with Chucky's lip syncing. By now, most of the time, Brad Dourif pre-records his lines and they're pre-programmed into the animatronics, so they'll perform the same way every take. When he has a pre-recorded dialogue, I just press a button. If I wanted you dead, you'd be tits up by now. Manual movements of the mouth are usually reserved for on-set reactions. During this scene, for whatever reason, the dialogue was done on-set by Mancini and puppeteer Peter Shivako. Durif had to go in later and match his lines to the already filmed, manually controlled mouths. The three Chuckies argue over who gets to kill Andy once and for all. Buzzcut pulls a trump card. Look at my hair! Oh shit, you win. Absolutely. Sorry, pal, you go fuck him up real good. If you listen closely, you can hear Brad Durif performing each doll differently. The Chucky come lately buzz cut variant is newly born and overly enthused, so Durif cracks his voice for those lines. I've never felt so alive! Yeah, well, you've been alive for like two minutes. <laughs> Out front, the beleaguered security guard finds Christine parked in front of the hospital. Huh, must have just come from Hot Topic. Well, we know what happens here. Big Tiff slits his throat before he can return Little Tiff for store credit, using the same technique and murder weapon as she did with officers Bailey and Stanton. Cherry snow cone. Lady, you've been to some fucked up state fairs. Eagle-eyed fans might recognize actor Darren Wall from his cameo and curse as a highway patrolman, but he was also the on-set visual effects supervisor for both films, just part of the cult of Chucky. Inside, the Chucky Coalition reveals their master plan. They're not here to kill Nika, but to possess her, just like they did with Alice. Time to break out the Boku. Ade Boku. The magic words in a lightning strike cause Nika to go full deadite. Chucky's soul is now inside of Nika. I call her Chuck Nika. Chuck Nika likes his boobs. As for whether Chuck Nika should be able to walk, I don't know. But the first shot of Nika in this movie showed her legs moving with electrical stimuli. I imagine that was included to suggest the possibility. It's not that important to me. What is important is that Fiona Durif is playing Charles Lee Ray. It's one of the best parts of the movie. She completely embodies the character, right down to the killing. This is for Nika. Chuck Nika ends Foley's reign by stomping on his head like it was an evil pumpkin who killed her family. This kill is so obscenely disgusting, done with an amazing fake head of actor Michael Terrio. It looks so gnarly on set, it got an audible reaction when they filmed it. Oh my god, look at that. Oh my god. Fucking awesome. Chuck Nika enters the lobby to find that Nurse Ashley has been killed with a gravity-defying drill sticking out of her stomach. Multiple Malcolm claims to have done the job. I killed her. But Chuck Nika says he didn't, and I'm inclined to agree. I don't think Malcolm killed Nurse Ashley because he's not actually possessed by Charles Lee Ray. I think when he came out of the grave, he was just adapting another personality. But now, all his personalities are dead, thanks to a drill that goes through the back of his head and out his eye! Oh my god! Dirty Babby, you bad. <laughs> God, 
Fiona even does the laugh perfectly. Fantastic Sam's finally finds his old buddy in the Aperture Science Wing. And he may be out knived, but he knows the one move that no good guy can withstand. Tummy tickles! Ha ha ha! Whoa! Andy going real hard on the tummy tickles. Damn, holy shit, that tummy crying tummy tears. This is the end! Fucker. Lil Andy's all grown up. He can say fuck now and bust caps. He loads his friend to the end full of lead, then stomps his head into Cherry Cobbler. Good goddamn, the gore doesn't stop. And he draws on Chuck Nika, who tells him there'd be a price to pay if he shot. You kill me, you kill her. Think about it. Holy shit, Andy would have sacrificed Nika's life if it meant finally getting rid of Chucky. But thanks to a lack of ammo, Andy's left locked in a cell as Chuck Nika flees outside. Tiffany is waiting for him in a fur coat, which Tilly says the character modeled after Kate Blanchett in Carol. And she just saw Carol recently, so... <laughs> um, there's nothing that funny about Jennifer Tilly aspiring to be Kate Blanchett. <laughs> the on-again, off-again lovers embrace and swap spit like it were bodies. Once again, the Chuck franchise plays with gender, with Charles inside a woman presenting body. So this is different. I don't know. Works for me. Before they Thelma and Louise off into the sunset, Tiffany mentions Alice to make sure the lights are on, but Nika's not home. Nah. Fuck that kid. Confirmed. That's pure Charles Lee Ray. Oh, and now that Tiffany in the back is laughing, I'm guessing Tiffany split her soul as well. And he is left as the prime and kind of only suspect as Charles, Tiffany, and Tiffany escape to the last place anyone would ever think to look for them, Basic Cable. It's kind of an abrupt ending, but thankfully, we now have the TV series to continue the story. Also, just like with Curse, Colt's unrated cut has a canonical post credit scene. Kyle's back to rejoin the anti-toy task force. And Andy sent me. We're gonna have some fun. Christina Lease reprises the role from more than 25 years prior in Child's Play 2. Good thing biker hats never go out of style. Having more Chuckies has gotta mean having more kills, right? I don't know, man. Let's check our math. Lucy? Yeah, let's get to the numbers. Uh, okay. You guys are hot. Nine people died in Cult of Chucky. Of those, four were women, four were men, and one was a good guy with a male soul shard. But that pie still tastes better than their vague meat soup. If you give him Nurse Ashley, Chucky added seven kills to his count. To avoid things getting too messy, I'll count the wheel spoke and drill as bladed objects, which account for five of his murders. The other two, a head stomp and the hand down the throat, will be filed under miscellaneous. Tiffany added one kill, the old nail file special, so here's how these killer dolls are stacking up at the end of the movie series. Speaking of which, Colt continued to lower the kills from the franchise's peak. That's okay though, they were super fucking gory. With a runtime of 90 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 10 minutes even. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Dr. Foley. I'd love to give it to Carlos, getting killed by three Chuckies and all, but Foley's head smush is seriously one of the absolute grossest kills I've ever seen. Dol Machete for lamest kill goes to Nurse Ashley. Drills are heavy, bits are narrow. That does not make sense. And Champion Chuckle for funniest part absolutely goes to the triple Chucky scene. All of it really, but if you made me pick a couple of lines, then these. I never felt so alive! Yeah, well you've been alive for like two minutes. <laughs> and that's it. Cult of Chucky came out in 2017 and was a big enough hit on home video that Mancini got a straight to series order from sci-fi to continue his toy story on the small screen. We've got to pause kill count trailers for now just because all of us are so busy, but on whatever day it comes out, there should be a kill count of season one of the Chucky series. Until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching this Kill Count recount. That should actually be the last recount for a while. I really wanted to go into the Scream recounts after this, but scheduling got too messed up for that to happen. Because I think I've said it before, but recounts actually take more work than a non-recount Kill Count. That's not a rule, it's just that recounts tend to be on movies that are really big and have a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Especially with something as big as Scream, I don't want to rush that just to get it out in October. Most likely case scenario is that those will come out in March ahead of Scream 6. I'm sorry. I really wanted to get to them, but you know I've got to do them right. I want to thank some patrons like Owen, Neo Sandman 4040, Nathaniel Hunt, Michael Myers, Julian A. Watkins, Jennifer Alice, James Bailey, and Ira Zyra. Thanks everyone. Be good people.